Dr. Angela Denver's weight loss expert from Benefit Medical Weight Loss. We have a special guest today. It is Lucky and our expert registered dietitian, Janelle. And thanks for joining us. In case you didn't catch us last week, we actually did fads or bad part one. So in case you missed it, go back, find the Facebook Live because now we're doing part two. So let's just dive in, all right? Janelle, what, what kind of diets should we not be doing that we didn't talk about last week? Okay, so I picked out four for us to focus on today. Um, the first one being detoxes. So if anyone has an Instagram account and are familiar with some of those ads or advertisements that the models have, detox is kind of a big one. So their claim is that you not only lose weight, but you decrease your bloating, um, reduce the water weight, you are able to detox and even have better skin. So the problem with these teas is that most of them actually contain extra caffeine in them. Um, they have diuretic ingredients, which again, if you're drinking them, uh, diuretics usually mean you're losing a lot of water weight, um, and a laxative. Uh, these ingredients are actually pretty dangerous if you're not being medically supervised, if you're using them for longer than a week at a time. In fact, we can actually check blood work uh, because you can't hide. There are certain changes in your kidney function, your electrolytes, that actually suggest the abnormal use of laxatives, meaning like um, for weight loss. So you actually can't hide if you end up in the hospital. Doctors can tell you what you're up to. So we don't recommend detoxes. Um, and then I'll let you know a bummer about like, hey, guess what, if you're losing weight, sure, that's fine, but it's actually all water. So even if you lose like five, 10 pounds, like literally, you know, almost overnight, you go back to a normal diet, boom, you're actually going to gain more than 10 pounds. You actually overshoot and gain more than your starting weight. So detox is definitely one of the more dangerous and not recommended diets out there, so. If you do like tea though, we recommend just drinking like a plain green tea, black, peppermint, um, any of those. They do contain tons of antioxidants. Again, don't add any cream, honey, sugar, anything like that. Yeah, and black uh, oolong tea and green tea are actually very healthy. They have a little bit of caffeine that will boost your metabolism. Obviously, you want to keep it clean, so no added sugars. Um, and then we recommend chamomile tea at nighttime to help calm and especially for those of you who have trouble sleeping. So there are certainly benefits for tea when it comes to weight loss, but it should not be sort of like the focus of your diet. And you know, basically, just chime in. I know that celebrities are doing it, but it's dangerous, not so good. So. Let's, let's give a thumbs down on the detoxes. <laughs> Lucky gets a paw, paw down. All right. <laughs> so the next one is the juicing diet, which we briefly mentioned last week. So the claim is weight loss, feeling rejuvenated, again, kind of that detoxing of your body. So juicing, which is usually kind of that green smoothie or shake um, that are made from fruits, powder, um, vegetables. Um, so the problem with juicing, it really kind of depends on how you do it. So a lot of people will juice um, and they'll add coconut oil, avocados, nuts to it um, so that when you consume them, they're going to be very high in fat and calories. Um, can be up to 400 calories. So if you're doing that, plus you're eating a regular breakfast, um, that's actually going to probably lead to your weight gain. Another issue, as I mentioned, a lot of people aren't adding protein to these. So they're just consuming fruits and vegetables. Yep. So I, I, I kind of mentioned this on the last uh, video, but I actually put myself through a three-day juicing diet just so that I could experience what people are doing out there. Um, obviously out of curiosity, surely there are some benefits uh, through juicing, but I'll give you from a personal level. So you get this kit, you know, they, they have one day juicing, they have three days, they have five days. I'm not certain that there's anything longer than that, but what happens is, is that, you know, you start with a green drink first thing in the morning, it usually has like kale and green apple and, you know, other things. And then I believe you have like a spicy lemonade 
mid-morning. At lunchtime, it's another green drink. Um, then in the middle afternoon, you have a red drink, which is kind of like a beet juice. Um, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of beet. I, I felt like I was drinking dirt. I know that there are other people who love it. My mom actually loves it, but I'm just gonna let you know. I had to like, I, I, I couldn't even down the beet drink. And then I think there's like an orange drink. And then you end the night with, you know, I was like at the office and I like had to kind of like slap myself to wake up, you know, type of thing. Um, the second thing that I noticed that was very peculiar is, is that I wasn't actually necessarily hungry, but I was like, kind of like moody. I mean, I just, I don't know, I felt like I was a little bit more aggressive and maybe, maybe I guess you would define that as irritable, but, but it wasn't because I was hungry because I could like kept talking to my staff members. It's a really weird feeling because I have a high level of self-awareness and I was like, I think it's just like cranky, but not really hungry. Maybe it was my definition of being hungry. Um, and then, but the, the benefit, last but not least, I actually do remember I had like a ton of energy. It almost actually was too much that I couldn't fall asleep that night. But overall, the summary is, is that it was short-lived. Whatever happened, I literally went through whatever, you know, the three days, and I went back to my normal eating pattern, and I was just back to the same thing that I was beforehand. So, so you wanna pay attention to the juicing diet. It's, it's really just like this, yes, they call it rejuvenation, but it is very short-lived, and also kind of this and the tea talks. Believe it or not, we actually have our own detoxification system. It's called the liver. We already do that on a natural, ongoing basis. So you don't necessarily need you know, a juicing diet to reset yourself. Sure, you can eat clean foods and eat healthy and cut out sugar, but in a detoxification manner, um, our body's actually built to detoxify on an ongoing basis. And again, kind of to add to what Dr. Tran was saying, of course the concept's great more fruits and vegetables, but also what I tell people is when you're juicing, you're actually getting less nutrients. So when you actually are juicing a fruit and vegetable, you're extracting all of the fiber from it. It's different than if you throw it into a blender and blend everything up. Um, when you blend fruits and vegetables, it actually breaks down the cell walls, so some of those enzymes and everything can really mix together. When you're juicing, it's not the same. Um, with Denver being a very health conscious area, there are also a lot of commercial places that will sell juices, but beware of these. Um, many of our patients have tried them before. We've gone online to look at the nutrition analysis and they're huge calorie bombs because of all the sugar that they contain. Only fruit, no protein powder whatsoever. Yeah, so if you're not really a fruit or vegetable eater, this would be a good option to supplement, not necessarily replace your meals for you know the next couple of days. And, but just steer away. This is certainly not for everybody and don't be fooled by some of the claims that may be false and actually put you in a worse scenario and actually when you get back to eating regular diet, again, just like the tea talks, you're gonna gain more than what you wanted to lose in the first place. So, so kind of to bounce off the um, juicing diet, the next one we're gonna talk about is the raw foods diet. So again, the claim is weight loss uh, and what really is beneficial about this diet is that people are trying to incorporate more fruits and vegetables and produce, but here is the catch. If you are doing a raw foods diet, that means that you cannot cook any of your fruits and vegetables. So no steaming, roasting, baking, boiling, um, any, any of that. Um, people who created this diet stated that cooking vegetables actually kills nutrients. Um, same with uh, fruits as well. And yeah, it just so is that true? I think that a lot of people have that question. Are you ruining your nutrients by steaming it or cooking vegetables? So actually, um, for some fruits and vegetables, cooking actually enhances the nutrients. So um, if you've ever read any of the newsletters I've written, actually uh, canned cooked tomatoes have more okay. lycopene, which is an antioxidant. Um, the same kind of goes for if you're steaming broccoli. Um, a lot of people get afraid um, when they kind of boil it, but if you steam it in the microwave, it actually has more vitamin C in it. So nice. that's a lot of research that's actually been done on that. Another thing is just like with you know, we as humans don't generally eat raw meat. Same goes for vegetables. If you're washing them and cooking them, you're also gonna help destroy some of that bacteria that could cause foodborne illness as well. Yeah, so that's a really
really good learning lesson. So, you know, for, I don't know, there's so many people, including my mom, who thinks that raw is the way to go, and that if you cook it or touch it at all, that it actually loses nutri nutrients. But hey, this is your one thing that you learned for the day. And for some people who have digestive issues, it's actually the only way they can really um, absorb and digest it correctly. Um, plus the food preparation methods of this diet is, it's very time extensive because you have to basically juice, blend, dehydrate, um, do kind of everything. Um, and plus we've kind of talked about this too, how important protein is in order for weight loss. Yep. Um, it's hard being on, you know, already a vegan diet of just produce, but adding in the raw, you know, kind of vegan diet. I mean, yeah, it's so very again, difficult. we actually have patients who uh, follow the vegan diet but come here and still overweight. So the common question, and I'll ask you, Janelle, why are vegans overweight? How can that be? If the, you know, vegan's a fairly healthy diet, why why would a person who follows a vegan diet have struggle with weight? So, when someone follows a vegan diet, they are getting some plant protein sources in. However, those plant protein sources also contain carbohydrates. So all of your fruits and vegetables have carbohydrates, but again, your plant sources do too. So even though beans and quinoa and tofu, um, soy, edamame, temp, all of those contain protein, they're also containing carbohydrates as well. In addition to that, in order to get the protein you need, you have to consume so much more of plant protein right. in order to reach that 70 grams. So not only is that more protein, but it's also more calories and carbs, essentially. Yeah, so again, it's a healthy diet for some people, but you have to be aware it's not just for anybody. So make sure you check with us before you start something like that, such as the vegan diet or a raw diet. And finally, my last one, um, it is called the Alkaline Diet. I don't know how much Dr. Tran has heard about it, but... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, my, my family does it. I, I think it's like attached to a Dr. Oz thing. I, I'm fairly certain he probably talked about it. And there's a lot of like functional medicine doctors or just uh, naturopathic. But, uh, but yeah, let's talk about it. Let's, let's inform our audience what it's all about. So this was one that at my old job when I used to work with oncology patients, a lot of them were desperate to try as a more natural or holistic way to kind of get better. So the claim is, is that there can be weight loss. Um, so basically there's an alkaline ash or acid diet. Um, you have to cut out meat, dairy, sugar and sweets, alcohol, artificial sweeteners, um, and incorporate more fruits, more vegetables, um, nuts, seeds into your diet. Um, it, like I said, it's pretty what strict. What else do you have to cut out? Your own <laughs> arm? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much, it's really restrictive. Again, I mean, the concept of incorporating, you know, more fresh fruits and vegetables is a great concept, but to completely cut out protein and everything else, you know, from the dairy, it's actually just not beneficial. It was alarming to me when my oncology patients who are already, you know, um, losing lean muscle mass are trying to cut out more protein, which is the only thing that helps us build our lean muscle up. Yep, and the most important thing is, is there, there are currently no research to back up necessarily the alkaline diet. So again, we are more than happy to promote a diet, but we, uh, favor science-based evidence to really show that. But if you, if any of you guys out there have tried any of these diets and swear by it and have good results, please chime in. You know, we're happy to um, open it up. But at the end of the day, we're here to be open to what you can try. Um, but it's all about safety and it's all about what does science support because we don't want you to put yourself in a dangerous situation or worse off, you know, gaining more weight when you get back on. So a lot of things to consider uh, with these four diets. So, um, so I learned a lot today, actually. <laughs> well, and just kind of to add to that too, um, kind of like you were saying with the liver, with the alkaline diet, our body can already regulate our pH. The foods that we take in have no effect on that whatsoever. Yeah, so, so all right, so I know you guys are working hard on your New Year's resolution. Some of you have kind of fallen off like flies already, but we are here to help. So if you want to get results, if you actually do believe in science-based treatments for weight loss, come connect with us at www.denverweightlossclinic.com. Lucky is having a hairball attack. But anyways, um, if you put in the code fads are bad, I'm giving you a free consultation because 
we care about your results. So again, go to www.denverweightlossclinic.com and we're excited to get you the results and get you on a diet that actually has been proven to work. All right, so we'll see you next time on part three, fads or bad. Don't forget to catch us because we're gonna really be talking about the more popular ones such as paleo, um, intermittent fasting, Whole30. Um, Whole30, yep. Check us next time. We'll see you.